Pusher provides us with a real-time communication framework. Clients can connect using WebSockets and listen for messages and instructions from Pusher, which are distributed instantly, as opposed to more traditional mechanisms which involve clients polling for server changes. WebSocket is a protocol for bi-directional communication over a single TCP connection and is perfect for real-time communication. There are other ways to utilize this protocol without using Pusher, but that involves either setting up your own WebSocket server or an alternative service which offers this functionality. Pusher makes it very easy for us to plug straight into the protocol. However, it is up to us as developers to both send messages to Pusher to be distributed to our clients and to instruct the clients how to respond to the messages. The first step for us is to install the Pusher PHP SDK and to use this to send messages to Pusher. We can test these messages using the Pusher web interface so that we know that our messages are being received before we go to the trouble of connecting clients to Pusher. As with the Twilio SDK, we can quickly add the Pusher SDK to our project by running the require command on Composer. We simply tell Composer which package to install, Pusher slash Pusher PHP server. The Pusher SDK doesn't regularly have new versions released, but does have small updates and fixes made on a semi-regular basis. As such, we're not going to tie a specific version. Instead, we'll use dev master which refers to the master branch of the dependency. In order to connect to Pusher, we need to provide our API key, or API secret, and our application ID, so we need to update our settings array to contain this information. In our bootstrap.php file, we can instantiate the Pusher library and pass along the key, secret, and app ID. Now we can use this object to trigger events. In other words, push data for Pusher to distribute to the clients which are listening. When we do push an event to Pusher, we want to know that it was successful without having to configure a client to listen for the events first. So let's open the debug console in the Pusher web interface. Provided we leave this open when we push an event to Pusher, it will log the data sent through it. To trigger an event, we simply call the trigger method on the Pusher library and provide the name of the channel, the name of the event, and the data which we wish to push. A channel is primarily a method of segregating data and being able to control who has access to the data and whom the data is distributed to. The name of a channel is up to us. If the name doesn't have a prefix, then the data is public to anybody who knows the name of the channel. If it is prefixed with private hyphen, then authentication is required. If it is prefixed with presence hyphen, then authentication is required, but we also have the ability for the channel to be aware of information about the clients connected to it. For instance, we could store the names of users connected if we were building a chat application. Client listening on a channel receives all data pushed to it. However, we can use different event names so the client can do different things with the data, such as display it to the user, ignore it, play a sound, and so on. The data pushed to Pusher needs to be an array or something which can be serialized into a JSON object, as that is the format the data takes. If we open up the page we created in a browser, it will push that sample data to Pusher, and we can prove that by looking in the debug console, where we will see our test data. We now know how to send information to Pusher to be distributed to listening clients. Now we need to configure clients to connect to Pusher and deal with the messages that they receive.